So let's now do an example where we incorporate all three of these equations of state that we've just spent the last 10 minutes defining. So this problem that I have written down here is calculate the molar volume of methane at 300 Kelvin and 100 atmospheres given that the second virial coefficient B prime of methane is negative 0.0017 per atmosphere. Assume that all other coefficients are zero. Let's compare this result to that obtained using the ideal gas law and the Vanderbilt equation of state. If the critical pressure is 54, or sorry, 45.4 atmospheres, the critical volume is 0 0.0990 liters per mole, and the critical temperature is 190.2 Kelvin. So for this problem, I'm going to start with the ideal gas law. And so in this case, since we know the ideal gas law to be equal to PV is equal to nRT, then we can just substitute in these values right away, and we can start to then determine what it is, the molar volume, for these conditions. So I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging first. I'm going to divide both sides by n, and I'm also going to divide both sides by p. And so what that means on the left-hand side is that I have the molar volume, and that's equal to the gas constant. Since my pressure is in atmospheres, I'm going to use the appropriate gas constant, which has units in atmospheres. The temperature is 300 Kelvin, and the pressure is 100 atmospheres. And so what that leaves me with is a molar volume of 0 0.246 liters per mole. The next one I'm going to calculate is the Vanderbilt's. Now this one is going to take a little bit of work because we have to calculate the constants A and B, but since we're given the critical volume, pressure, and temperature, this isn't such a challenging thing. And so I know that the critical volume is equal to 3 times B. And so then if I solve for B, then that's just equal to Vc divided by 3. I can then substitute in for Vc, which is 0 0.0990 divided by 3, which means that my B is equal to 0 0.0330. I can also calculate my A constant. In this case, I'm going to use the critical pressure. And I know that that's equal to A divided by 27B squared. And so at this point, I can rearrange for A. I know A is going to be equal to 27B squared times PC times the critical pressure. I substitute in those numbers. 27 times B squared, 0 0.0330 squared times the critical pressure, which in this case is 45.4 atmospheres. And so then that gives me an A value of 1.335. Now I could have used the critical temperature to calculate either of these two values, A and B. I just chose this way, using the critical volume and the critical pressure. Regardless, I can continue now and I can just directly calculate what is my molar volume based on the Van der Waal equation of state. So pressure is equal to RT divided by the molar volume minus B minus A over the molar volume squared. So in this case, I can start substituting in numbers. The pressure is 100 atmospheres. I'm going to use the appropriate gas law constant, 0 0.08206. The temperature is 300 Kelvin. I have molar volume minus my B constant, which I just calculated, 0 0.0330. From that, I'm subtract off A, which is 1.335, divided by the molar volume squared. Now, the solution to this, if I were to try to solve this analytically, what it involves is that it involves solving a cubic root. And this is something that I would not expect you to do by hand in this course. And so what I did is, or what I would suggest you would do in this case is, go to Wolfram Alpha, or find yourself a cubic root solver, and you can basically numerically solve for the molar volume. And so what that gives us then in the end is a molar volume that is equal to 0 0.229 liters per mole. Now the final method we're going to look at, again, of course, is the virial method. 
And so with the Vero method, we have to first calculate the compressibility, the, the factor Z, at this pressure. And then we can use that and substitute in um, to the modified ideal gas law, where we take into account compressibility to calculate the molar volume. So in this case, we can calculate the compressibility Z as being equal to 1 plus B prime times the pressure. And in this case, since the problem itself says all other coefficients are 0, like it says up here, then we don't need to go any further in this expansion. So if we substitute in for numbers, we've got 1 plus B prime in this case is negative 0 0.0017 times the pressure. That's 100 atmospheres. So my Z in this case is going to be equal to 0 0.83. Now this 0 0.83, what this tells us is that we have attractive forces at work because, again, the compressibility is less than 1. But at this point, we can just substitute in now into the modified ideal gas law where we take compressibility into account. Z is equal to P times the molar volume divided by R times T. We're trying to solve for the molar volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by RT. And I'm going to divide both sides by pressure. I can then substitute in the numbers. I'm going to have 0 0.83, which is my compressibility, times my ideal gas constant using the one with the appropriate units, 0 0.08206. And that's going to be times the temperature, which is 300, all divided by 100. And that's equal to 0 0.204 liters per mole. So the final part to this question asks us to compare our results. So one way to do this is that we would just calculate a percent error. And that what we'll do is we'll take the virile equation of state to be the precise value that we should get and that we will compare it to what we got from the ideal gas law and the van der Waal equation of state. So if we start with the ideal gas law comparison, then what we would write is 0 0.4 or 2.46 minus 0 0.204 divided by 0 0.204 times 100. When we evaluate that, we get a percent error of 20.6%. And if we find out the percent error with the Van der Waal equation of state, then with that we're going to write 0 0.229 minus 0 0.204 divided by 0 0.204. In that case, we only get a 12.3% difference. So these aren't insignificant errors. A 20.6% error and a 12.3% error. It's at least good to know that, or good to see that the Van der Waal equation of state does do a better job at trying to quantify the molar volume of, of these conditions for methane than the ideal gas law, principally because it's trying to include repulsive and attractive terms in its formulation. But it's very evident that the ideal gas law does not include any attractive terms or any attractive forces. And I can claim that there's attractive forces at work here with the methane because the molar volume, when we try to include both attractive and repulsive forces, is less. Not to mention that my virial coefficient is less than 1, which implies that there are attractive forces at play. The, in my percent error calculation, whenever you do any of these, you always do whatever you measured minus whatever you take to be the exact value. And so in this case, because the virial equation of state is supposed to give an empirically exact value, then that's why I'm choosing to compare directly to the, the virial um, or the value calculated from the virial coefficients. And so again, what this set tells us is that both the ideal gas law and the Van der Waal equation of state don't completely accurately reflect reality. However, for this course, the simplicity of the ideal gas law is going to make it so that we will be using it quite frequently for many gas-based examples. We started this lecture by looking at the kinetic model of gases, which provided an initial framework from which to quantify the properties of gases. The ideal gas law is derived from the kinetic model of gases and is valid when gases are at low pressures and high temperatures. 
This is because the kinetic model of gases and the ideal gas law do not account for intermolecular interactions, which become important at higher pressures and lower temperatures. The Van der Waals equation of state tries to take these interactions into account and is valid over a larger domain of temperatures and pressures compared to the ideal gas law. The Virial equation of state is accurate for real gases. It relies on a concept called compressibility, which is a direct measure of how the pressure of gases change as a function of volume. The fitted parameters for compressibility have no physical meaning, so no direct correlation between the fitted parameters and intermolecular interactions is possible. We examined several models on how to describe gases. As the models become more accurate, they were also more complicated and required more experimental data to apply. No matter which model is used, it's important to understand the assumptions used in the model so that you can determine if it's valid for the conditions you are using it for.